Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV. We have with us boxing great Australian legend, Mr. Jeff Fennick, Rob Whitaker, um, UFC fighter, and <laughs> David Roberts, uh, TAFE extraordinaire. Um, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, mate. Pleasure to be in the company of Rob Whitaker. I love, yeah. um, love and support everything he does. He's doing a great job for our country, so it's um, exciting for me to be here with you guys. All right, just to, just to kick off, I suppose, uh, one of the things I was going to ask you, like, Let's start at the beginning. Who 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 is Jeff? Fen who was Jeff Fenwick yeah. way before he was Jeff Fenwick? Like little yeah, well, kid, yeah, like, no, your, your folks. yeah, yeah. My folks immigrated from Malta. Um, I was born in um, uh, not Maryville, it was a little suburb close to Maryville called St Peter's, and uh, all I ever wanted to do was be a rugby league football player. Played football all my life, yeah. um, at, and and. 17 and a half or 18 years of age, I went to a youth club. Um, I didn't go to the box, I went there to have a fight with some people and then... Um, like a punch-up? Yeah, we went there as, <laughs> as a group of people to have a punch-up and there was, the, the people weren't there. And the, the last room we looked in was a, a room that had boxing on it and it had a little uh, glass component on the door where you could see in. And I seen a friend of mine that um, played football with me and he was also an Australian champion boxer. I sat down and watched him and I uh, heard this man say, about somebody boxing, and I said I'd box him. You know, I used to think I was a tough little kid. I was in, you know, uh, you know fights all the time. So um, the trainer said, "Have you ever boxed before?" I said, "No." And we ended up having a spar. And um, to be honest, I got beat up. I got winded a few times and stuff. But um, at the end of the at the end of the session, the trainer said, "You sure you've ever boxed before?" And at the start, what he was saying, I thought this guy's just trying to lead me the on. The guy you was, sparred with was the Australian boxing champion? He was Australian champion. His name was Mark Cribb. That was your first ever proper spa? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Trial by fire. Yeah, just fresh. And, uh, anyway, but um, so in my mind, in, in front of a few of my friends, I, got, I kind of got beaten up and I thought, wow, should I, I don't, I don't want to get beaten up. So I wasn't really going to go back, but the trainer said, oh, you've got potential, come back. I went back the next day and um, it changed my life. I, Started to box as well as play rugby league at the time. I played all representative football when I was, uh, like I said, when I was 18, I was 48 kilos. Um, I won, you know, in a, in a few fights, I became state champion and Australian champion. Um, you know, I went to the to the World Cup in Rome after only my 12th amateur fight, and I, I won a bronze medal. What um, year was that? I uh, went to the World Cup in '83. Right. Started um, as an amateur boxer in '81, um, and then um, yeah, like I said, things happened really quick. Um, it's national. Uh, Australian champion and yeah, it was like the great thing was that um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer and hope Rob believes in this too that I, I believe in goal setting and if, you, if people set your goal especially something that's achievable and you start achieving your goals you, you love it and you, and you learn from that and I want to achieve more and I, I can always remember my, my trainer Johnny Lewis saying Jeff if you dedicate yourself and you're good enough you can go to the Olympics and I think oh wow you know and um, I'll never forget that Rob when I just spoke about the, the, the World Cup in Rome my trainer and was away just before I had to go and he wrote me a letter, I still, I still have the letter and in the letter he wrote this, he said, Jeff, go into the World Cup, I don't even expect you to and just go and do your best. The experiences will all come to fruition by 85. Well, in 84 I went to the Olympics and 85 I was world champion. It was just like that he knew what was going to happen. It was, it was really weird. He wrote me a letter because, um, yeah, prior to me going to the World Cup, he was away and he wrote me this, you know, this kind of letter that I've, I've always kept and I always think, well, how did he know that? But he always set me these goals and he set me achievable goals and goals that he believed that I could achieve. And like I said, when I, when I went to, people don't realise when I went to the World Cup in 83, I had 12 amateur fights, never heard of. When I went to the Olympics, I had 24 amateur fights, never heard of. I mean, and I fought guys who had hundreds of fights. And although I never won a medal, I'd, I'd won a medal and they overturned my decision there at the Olympics. So had I, when the judges said that I won, that means I was in. I was in the final straight can, away. Can you talk about it? Because you, you did. You you, yeah. you won the fight. Yeah. You yeah. walked off, and then they overturned. Well, no, the first time in Olympic boxing history, they, yeah. they didn't just have judges, well, they had a jury, and the jury was just a boys' club. You know how they take somebody extra. They, you know, it was just a. Yeah, and they, they had these guys who didn't even sit ringside. They sat further back than the judges, and they had the scoring differently. They had it corruptly, you know, because you know, and there's lots of corruption in amateur sport. But then, all of a sudden, I've gone from winning. A fight to losing it and, and coming straight home and I'll never forget when I got off the off the plane or even during the interviews in in LA I said anything um, I wanted to, oh, of course I wanted to say amateur I wanted to be the first guy to win a, uh, a gold medal at the Olympics and um, but I said if they wouldn't let me do that I'd, I'd become world champion and in the shortest time in, back then in history in 196 days I'd became world champion and people don't realize today that only 
I don't know, could have been six or eight months ago that Lomachenko finally broke my record. I was the I was the quickest person in history to win three world titles undefeated. I'm the only one back then. I was the first person to do it undefeated. And the whole country should be you know, supporting you on your back. When I am, um, when I fought for the super featherweight title, the junior lightweight title, when I fought at Zuma Nelson and I won and they robbed me, the, the featherweight champion of the world, the junior featherweight champion of the world and the bantamweight champion of the world were all three people who I defeated. It's never been, never been done in boxing, nobody even realised that I'd done it, but in 1990 when I fought for the world title, the three WBC world champions below me, I defeated every one of them. So um, yeah, I've done some things that, again, Australia don't give you credit for. And I, like I said, when I sit here with you, I think that, um, yeah, we, yeah, you, you deserve so much more credit and so much more um, than you deserve. I mean, your sport is, um, for me, it, it's not the sport that I love, but I, I know how difficult it is when you, you've got to box, you've got to wrestle, you've got to do all those kind of things. And like, you know, um, uh, like I said, I just think that you deserve so much more credit than you get. And like I said, again, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here and talking to you and sharing my story with you guys. Why do you think that is? Uh, Australia love you on the way up, and they, they kind of chop you down. They want you to, they can't wait for you to make a mistake or somebody to be there to say, yeah, listen, I think the, the greatest disease in the world is not AIDS or not cancer, it's jealousy. And, and you know, it's a, it's a, it, the, the sad thing is it's a disease that has no, it has no cure for, you know. Um, yeah, people, people get, you know, they love you at, at, at a stage and they get, they get jealous and they think, wow, you know. Why has this guy got what he's got? I remember Rob just saying how beautiful my house is. I remember when I moved in here. Wow, in the in the in the mid eighties, um, all my neighbours, oh boy, has that guy got a you know a house back then, you know, they didn't realise I got up every morning you know, five AM and rain, rain, hail or shine and but and train while I'd solve my pants to make weight. I'd done it many times where I'd would have had to love to go to the toilet but I couldn't stop training and that you know. So people don't realise what yeah, what I went through to to have what I have today, and um, you know, like um, uh, that's that's one of the problems I think with Australian society, society in general. But like I said, I know if I went to my to my mother and father's um, land in Malta, they'd make a statue of them. I'd be a hero there for what I've done, you know. But here, um, like I said, they they um, wait for you to make mistakes, and they want to um, eat you down for making mistakes instead of when people make mistakes. Yeah, people can learn from them, and you can. As long as you can put your hand up and you're honest about things, you can be a great role model by making mistakes and teaching people to make the same mistakes you do, you uh, you made. But Australia aren't like, Australians aren't like that. They like to chop you down and you know, um, yeah, not make you feel too good after it. Do you see any parallels in your trajectory, uh, similar to Rob's? Uh, I don't know about parallels, but I just see that this amazing talent that's doing something that no other Aussie's done. He just doesn't get what he deserves. I mean, wow. I mean, um, and listen, it, it's you know, Rob. When I, when I think of back in my heyday, I don't even like who I was because I got everything for nothing. And um, to be honest, when I was three-time world champion, I came back from Vegas after I got that draw. I was this huge superstar that got everything for nothing. I, I think back today, I think, man, there are people out there that walk past restaurants that can't even afford to eat. Nobody offers them food. Me, I go in, I get everything for nothing. So I don't know the world is a bit mixed up, and you know, um, uh, we don't live in a in a perfect place. But I, I'd like to think that um, all those people who like to pat Jeff Fennick on the back back then could have, you know, every every night given somebody who needed a, a feed a, a feed. But like I said, um, I, I think the world is kind of mixed up. We we live in a mixed up place, and I mean, um, the only time it's going to get better is when everybody. Can um, represent uh, the same the same thing, and I mean, like I said, race, religion, and all that kind of stuff that we go through every day here in Australia. And um, we've got to realise if they want to call it the greatest place in the world, we've all got to be on the same page. We've all got to, you know, live by the same rules and abide by the same rules, and then then the place will be better. And then you know, I think Rob would get the uh, the what he deserves. I mean, so what? He, he's a UFC fighter. I mean, why he's world champion? He's our only one. Why is he like? A Roger Federer or a Rafael Nadal in their country because then that's Australia just don't don't do that, you know. Um, do you have anything? Mm, <laughs> do you feel underappreciated, Rob? Oh, the, the, it, it's hard. I don't. I, try, I really do try not to to, to, to think, think about, about it. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because you don't want to you, you don't want to get that big. Head, but it's not about getting a big head. So I, I understand that too. And like I said, for me, it, it didn't bother me. But I just think that I've been and I've done it, and I know what it took to get there. So I just kind of think sometimes that 
these guys don't get what they deserve. So, yeah, de- um, definitely in a sense that like, I don't, I don't, I half think that half the reason why a lot of people can't appreciate, you know, the, the, the sport and, and how hard it is because they don't understand the sport and how hard it is. You know, I, I think a lack of understanding is what creates that sort of distance between appreciation and just can't appreci- appreciate it. You but know then I'll, I mean? I'll butt in and tell you that's, that's the media's fault. I mean, we've got this opportunity. Yeah, like, I mean, 100% yeah, it's, it's, it, well, let me tell you, I've, I've got these young fighters who train every day and they get no publicity. But, and no disrespect to Paul Gallon, who's a great athlete, and he can fight as well. But they get headlines in the papers when they're going to fight. They sell all these tables and they, here are the guys who do this every day of their life and, and they don't even get the paper. Like I say to the media, uh, why well, you got to wait for him to become world champion? Support him on the way up there so people know who he is. Support him. Support these guys on the way up. It's the media's fault. They don't, um, they don't have space in the paper for them for our sports, I, unless, unless you're agree. something, you know, out of this world, unless there's something to write about. I mean, um, yeah, there should be a, a designated column. There should be a, a column every couple of days on, on UFC, on, on Robert Whittaker, on people who are trying to be Robert Whittaker, because there are plenty of people that want to do that. I, I 100% agree, and, and it, it really is the, the culture and like how, how the game is set like that at the moment. It's like nobody cares and would rather step on you on the way up until you make it, until they, you, you pass that threshold, and then... And then everybody wants to yeah, talk to you. Yeah, and then they're bound to you. But you know, the, the worst thing is, again, Rob, think of the, the, the greatest numbers in any sport ever. Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson. It's, it's combat sport. And when, when it's them guys, they write about it, but they've got, to, they've got to support these other guys, these guys, these up and comers, so people know them on the way up there and help them. Like I said, they, they, um, you know, we, with no support, no sponsors, no media, these, these guys make nothing. And, and doing a job eight hours a day or 10 hours a day and then have to go and train, it just doesn't work, you know? So, I mean, if these guys had the, the media attention out there, it would work. They could get a sponsor and they could go and have a few days off work or they could have them, you know, they could, they, could, they could train professionally, you know, which we don't get here in Australia unless you're managed by somebody like, well, my boxes are fine because I'm blessed that I've got great people who've helped me, my sponsors, Cabe and um, City City Toyota and all these other people who helped me. I'm, I'm blessed that, um, yeah, Metway Developments, I, I can go and ask them for money every day and my, my, my boys don't have to work and they can be full-time professionals. But, um, but uh, unless it's, you, you're with somebody that you know, or you've been there and done it. It's 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 a, it's a tough job. It's a tough road. And I can imagine what it took for you to get to where you got to. I, I remember when um I was I think I was ranked three in the world, and I still had like less than a handful of sponsors. And still have to work. Like, no, I didn't have to work, well, but but like it, it, it's not being three in the world. In the world, like you you shouldn't have to be worrying about any rent. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, but like I said, I mean that's and, 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 and again, turn it, now that you're world champion, they they ask you for a story. It'd be great if you said, nah, you didn't want to know me when I was number three. Well, why do you want to know me now? But you can't say that because we need them, and they know how badly we need them. You know, so it's a, you know, I, I, I honestly I blame the media and I blame the, um, again, if you look at the, the the numbers on TV, who do they make all the money off? They make money off. UFC pay per view, they make one of boxes pay per view. They put nothing back into us. They put nothing into our development. They put nothing into our youth. And until they do that, now our sport's always going to suffer. Yeah, all right. I agree. That's the truth there. It really is. When you were growing up and you said you, you played rugby league, so you played all representative? Like, like yeah, yeah, played uh, from 14 from fourteen to 18. I represented New Down in every representative. Under Jets? Yeah, 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 yeah. I played for the New Down Jets, yeah. And then um, at 18, I became a little more serious in boxing and um, I couldn't um, mix football anymore because I was travelling on Australian titles and went to Indonesia and I went to Bangkok and fought in other countries. And, and, and coming up when you were playing football you said you, you, were you, you were always getting into fights as a kid? Yeah, I used to. I used to no. Were you a rough kid? I know, my, 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 <laughs> parents, my parents were pretty strict but... Um, strict in what way? Well, well I, be home at a certain time and stuff, but um, you know, my dad was very strict. But um, when I went out, um, if I told my dad I was going to the park, I was usually somewhere else or doing something else, and yeah, we're out fighting. I was, I was in the gang, and yeah, we fought a lot. Yeah, we, um, that was our hobby was going out fighting other people. We used to get in the fights against other gangs, and um, as a I got locked up in a youth um, detention centre when I was a young boy. And um, how old were you when, when you got locked up? Um, 
thirteen. Yeah. So, so what, what what was what what was that like? Um, so when you got locked up when you were thirteen, how long were you locked up for? Um, I worked, first, um, when we everybody was charged and uh, were they for fighting? Yeah, for fighting. Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, for fighting. They said that um, we, I was like third. I'm not going to. The lawyer said, hey, he's never been in trouble before. He won't get locked up." And well, me and my brother, we both. First, we got a. Um, uh, they give us six months, so we had to go and be in a boys' home. And then my my parents, my mum appealed, and we went to court after a while, and we ended up getting from three and a half months to three years. So, with the, so the appeal, yeah. the, the appeal wasn't well, great. The, the appeal went the other way. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went against us because yeah, we, back then it was it was a kind of a, a really tough time and there were a lot of gang fights happening and um, on, on one of the weekends that we had a fight a young boy w was killed and yeah all that kind of stuff so they tried to make an example but anyway I was I was home in three months because I behaved and I played rugby league in there and yeah I was home so um, uh, yeah I spent a few months in here in, in, on Parramatta Road in a place called Yasma and then I did my um, time in a, in a place called Ormond in Thornley so, so boys home twice you got locked up? well no I was that was where I was waiting for my court dates and stuff like locked that. In so they, yeah, it's in remand there, they keep it there. It was on Parramatta Road for 100 years, just been locked down. And then I went there, and like I said, um, for me, um, the worst thing is, and the worst thing in anything you do in life is that you don't realise how, you all think you're tough and strong, you can do this and you've done that, but you don't realise how, how, how much it hurts the people who love you. Where my mum, my dad was sick all his life, my poor mum had to come from um, St Peter's, to Thornley and then go to Gosford because my brother was in a boys' home in Gosford. So, so they was, separated you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was long, yeah, because yeah, we were different ages too. My brother was older than me. So, yeah, you don't realise that in life when I talk and do anything today, I, I just tell people one thing then. We can all think we're big and strong and tough and you can handle this, but you don't realise when you've got children and you've got a wife and you've got mother and fathers and people who love you, how much it hurts them. So don't worry about thinking how tough we are. Just um, Think first about all the people you're going to hurt, and then and then then don't do it. Because if there's anything I could change, I'd I'd love to change the hurt that I've caused. Um, like I said, I'm I've been through things that you think you learn lessons from, but um, the people you hurt on the way, it's it's unfixable. In in that interim, when you when you got into a fight, did whatever you did, and then you got locked up, did that did that talk that you're having now, that self talk that you're saying, like the, the hurt, were you cognizant of the fact that you were hurting your mum at that age, or you still yeah, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really. I yeah, just thought that yeah, it was my mum, part and parcel. Like, they look after you. That's that's how my mum was. So she just loved us unconditionally. And I'll, I'll never forget that. One day, um, <laughs> when I got out of the, the boys' and one of my next door, one of my old next door neighbours, this lady said, uh, ah, some screaming about me being a. A bad kid. I'll never forget. My mum really pulled her door down and was grabbing her, wrestling again. My mum was going to kill her because she's like embarrassing, you know, and having a go at her children. That's just that's how your parents are. But as I got older, and now I, I look back at some of the, the things I've done as an adult and been and, and some of the people I've, um, you know, been guilty by association with. I, I um, yeah, I kind of um, have a lot of regrets, and I think about the hurt that I put my children for her, my wife and, and, and my mum while she was here, you know, and I certainly am, mm, don't like who I was or what I'd done back then. You know, we were having this conversation about um, stuff in regards to regret and regretting stuff and everything and that, and like, because it was a long conversation the other day with, with Rob and I were having, and um, one of those things is like, you know, a lot of times you hear people saying like, oh, I don't regret anything, but I, I think like, I think what you just said then is like, you, you have to think if, about if, what yeah, you're if, do, if, you know? they don't, if they don't have regret, they don't have a filter. Everybody's got to have a filter. Like I said, um, like I said I'm, I made mistakes and yeah, you, you can't change them. Yeah, yeah. But, but right. then when you think of it's what, the right, ramifications, right. then when you think of the hurt, like I said, you have to walk yeah. down the street and somebody, you know, says something about you, you have your family near and you know, what do you do, you know, like I'm one of those, listen, I became world champion because of, because of my temper and stuff and I, I don't give a rat's ass if it's, you know, although, like I'm saying, if somebody says something to me and uh, they've got to, hopefully they can back it up, I don't care where I am or what it is, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll always, I'm not going to walk away, I'm, 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 I'm not that person that, no problem, you know, I'll, I'll go and confront them, you know, I'll, you know, and I'll, confront them in, 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 in the manner that 
they deserve to be confronted. If I mean, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, have you ever made a mistake before? You know, and then uh, if they oh, so you've had people actually oh, say to you, gee, yeah, 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 many times. I, you know, and growing, well, when I was when I was first world champion, I'd be out of clubs. I'd, I'd be in the, I'd be in the toilet because I'd you know, in the toilet. And I'd either yeah, he's that little so and so think is uh, it's different. It's, di awesome. it's like different. That. It's different in the street. I'd kill. So I'd say, well, what would you do to me? Like, they take a heart attack. You know? yeah. Yeah, I'd much prefer to fight somebody in the street in the ring. I can, yeah. I'm, much, I'm much better equipped in the street than I am in the ring. You know, I can use my whole range of tools. You know, but um, yeah, but people, yeah, I, I went through that. I went through it because I was a small guy. You know, I went through it my whole life, my career. But um, like I said, uh, yeah, you'd love to, the, the, if you could change. There's one thing I'd like to change is, is, is the attitude of that, of that person, and because nothing would have happened. But like I said, you, you can't change. You know, um, things that happen spontaneous, and yeah, you know, people always give you this this line: "Is I mean, if you just gave yourself ten or fifteen seconds to think about it, would you do it?" No, you wouldn't. But yeah, you, but you don't. You don't give yourself ten or fifteen you, seconds. That's it. Do you yeah. think you would have been a, as good a fighter as you were if you did change that, though? Uh, no. Your mentality, no, your no, attitude. No. Well, today, I, today I tell everybody, and I, I tell everybody, um, because because during my fights. I was. I thought I was. A th I tell everybody. Um, the st it's not the strongest guy who wins fights. Or it's the smartest guy. It's somebody who can set a trap and, and know what's happening and can see what's happening. And, and that takes one. Two guys. These guys. They just go there and think they're going to punch each other's head in. I mean, they don't last long. Yeah. You, 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 Fight IQ is real. Oh, you got to. You got to. <laughs> you got to be. You've got to be able to think. And I tell all my guys. I, I train and. It's a thinking man's sport. Yeah. It's not a tough man's sport. And, you know, I've tried you to explain that to to some of my friends that have asked questions about things, and it's like, it's not who's a better puncher. It's like when you're in there, it, it is a game of chess. Oh yeah, and it's not it's not this people you just this wild guy. No, you've got to work out how to get there. You got to you got to work out what he's trying to do there. It's it's it's, it's so it's so mental. It's it's, yeah. it's so much more mental than people it's give so credit for. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, but again, then then again, Rob, it's it's, it's a thing where you you've got to learn to. To relax at the right times when when there's a time to relax, I like, I I can box ten rounds tomorrow because I just know I can hold somebody and stop them and start when not, you know. So yeah, and that that comes with experience, you know. And um, yeah, so for me, like I said, um, um, I'd, of course I'd love to, to change the hurt that I put my family through and my children through, but I can't change it. So all I can do is try to be a better person and, and try to make them learn from my mistakes and tell them and, and not do the same yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and just be honest. You have got to be honest. Like I said, um, all these parents that. They think their kids go out and they're good. Right? They, they do drugs. They smoke. They do, yeah. So I mean, listen. I'd rather I'd rather my my, my kids um, get in the trouble of having a fight rather than being, doing drugs and, and and smoke. You know, I just look. I'm, I'm really against. I've never had a smoke in my life. I've never had a drug in my life. People come around. You never had a drug in your life. Yeah, yeah, people say, listen. I tell. I know heaps of people who do drugs. Just do, do me a little favour. Don't embarrass me. I don't do it. Just do it on your own. If you can't be on the same page as me, on the same level as me, just by having a, a glass of wine or just being normal, then then don't mix me. Don't don't come with me when you know people say to me, you can't tell that guy was doing coke. How am I going to tell he's doing coke? I've never done cocaine in my life. Have a look at his pupils. How am I? His, excuse me. What the fuck his pupils look like when they're doing cocaine? I've never done it. I just tell him the truth, you know. But I I'm dead against that stuff, you know. I just um, you know I know how many. People who I've known as children who've ruined their whole lives and their families' lives from doing drugs and robbing people and robbing their family. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not in that stuff. Was um, performance enhancing drugs a big thing for you for you guys? Yeah, well, I've, I've, never, I've never taken a vitamin in my life. I don't, you know, and that's one of my problems. Now, but guys, are you fighting? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you, you know, because um, um, I, I've, never, I've never thought of it. Was there any? Was there ever a guy you fought that you thought, man, this guy is something? Um, just like, physically, maybe like physically well, yeah, stronger yeah, my, 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 or the power or cardio. Yeah, no, yeah. When I fought that Victor Kalajas, I mean, I, you know, I'm not sure if I give him smelling salts every time he came back out because he, you know, he come back out, you know, like you know. But um, when I think of it, look, I, I, I think you know, I don't say in a bad way, but I, I think of all fighters, and usually when you go up in weight, you're supposed to lose a little bit of power, but you sort of Manny Pacquiao's the only guy I've ever known that's gone up in weight and got he stronger. Yeah, so you know, it, 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 you think you think things, but like I said, I don't, if you want to just call him a freak, or if you want to call him, like you know, look, Lance Armstrong was able to do things for such a, a long period of time and, and and never get detected, and and no mm. disrespect, but I know I know dozens of rugby league players who have I don't know about taking 
enhancing drugs, but have taken drugs and, and been let off a million times during their career. So um, there are certain people in, in certain positions that can cover things up and if, if it needs to be. But like I said, me, um, I've never had a coffee in my life, so I don't, um, you know, when people talk about... You don't drink coffee? I've never had a coffee in my life, sorry. How are you getting up at five, uh, running on the road I'll, without I'll coffee? Up, I'll get up. I'll get up at four thirty every day now, and I do my stuff. You know, I without ride, coffee. Yeah, I ride the bike like twenty five k in the morning, twenty five k in the afternoon. I ride. I'll do. I, I can do twenty k on the bike in under twenty seven minutes. I can barely tell myself to breathe yeah, without coffee. Yeah, I've never had in my life. Yeah, so just yeah, I know. And like I said, um, you know, when people used to try to give me things when I was younger, I used to always think because I used to think. People used to come to the gym, oh, I forgot to take this vitamin, I don't feel good today, so I never wanted to depend on it. I just depended on, 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 on my work yeah, the ethic. Crutches. And, yeah, yeah, and, and how hard I tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a question for you, because you mentioned it when you were, like, um, the weight division, just quickly, you said, oh, you're supposed to lose a little power. Did you do anything different when you moved up? Like, did you, did you try to put on some more mass, or no. did you just, just do no. the same thing? No, yeah, because I was always bigger, so I was losing weight, mm. yeah. And to be honest, Rob, I'm going to say this, because, um, yeah. No disrespect to my trainer, who's in the Hall of Fame, he, he knew nothing. I mean, when I fought at Zuma Nelson, we came, we didn't even watch the video. He just thought I was going to win. Watch every fight I've ever had. Watch every fight I've ever had. This is, this is going to be a bit of a, I don't know if it's a bit of a first, and whether people can love it or hate it. Watch every fight I've ever had. See, what if he ever gave me one instruction during a round? Never. Just because I was beating everybody. He never said to me, watch Rob's going to do that. Watch when I, my first time I ever got knocked down. The words were keep your hands up. Didn't tell me what I got hit with. <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah, that's it's the truth. And, and no disrespect to Johnny, but um, yeah, I um, I trained with with Emmanuel Stewart towards the end of my career, and wow, what a what a difference to, mm. w when somebody tells you why you're doing something, explains what he's doing with you. I mean, like I said, um, yeah, we did pad work with Johnny, and like I said, after I fought with Jim Nelson, we never even watched the video. We never went back and watched it. We just thought I was going to beat him again. Um, he went back. He watched everything I'd done studied everything he could have done to me and everything I'd done to him and come, comes back and I thought I was going to win easily and now I end up getting knocked out Rob, you know, although, although again back, back in that day Rob, not that I ever make excuses, but I was a, I was a wild child from there, when I, all of a sudden I became rich, I became more famous than I was, two weeks sponsored me, I had my own clothing line, I could sleep with just about any girl I wanted to and I did that I can quite regularly on a daily basis, you know, whenever I wanted to, every time I went and did an appearance where I was up at five every morning and, and, and had my, my routine and my regime, like, man, I was doing appearances at 10 in the night, doing, you know, yeah, going to about my- sleeping. Yeah, I yeah, I did everything wrong, right? Everything was wrong, Rob, for that, for that fight. But like I said, no excuses. For the first assumption? No, nah, for my second fight, yeah, yeah. For my second fight when I was in Melbourne, I was, it's, I can see that. Yeah. I'd, I'd get up in the morning, the people on the road clap me as I'd run and stuff, you know, thinking, wow, you know, mm. this is great, you know, you know, and you don't think it's ever going to stop, you know. How much does that affect? You know, it, it affects you automatically. You, you can say it doesn't affect you, but... It seeps in. Yeah, yeah. Listen, right. No, because that, 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 that's the fame thing. And fortune, thing. Fame and fortune changes everybody. Yeah. As much as we, ah, I've never changed, I'm still from Maryville. Yeah, bullshit, I was from Maryville. Yeah. We had whatever I wanted to, drove whatever car I wanted to, I'm not from Maryville. I thought I try to tell, <laughs> yeah. tell myself, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm still from yeah. Maryville, the but only time I, I drive, drive anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Every, the only time if, if somebody stole one <laughs> and I jump in yeah. it, you know, that's the only time I was getting a, a nice car back then. But yeah, so as much as people want to say, oh, we're still the yeah. same, we don't change, you, you change automatically. You see that a lot with like some of the, some of the real higher level guys in like in my own sport and a lot of other sports. It's like they 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 build themselves up to such a degree that they start to believe the bullshit they're spilling. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's like, and they, it's to, to the point where they think they're untouchable. They think they're unstoppable. It, and they're really not. They yeah. have the same amount of bones as we do. 100%, mate. That's what, that's what I tell everybody. So I tell all, everybody that I, that I train and say, listen, we've all got two arms, two legs. Listen, and listen, and there might be somebody better than you, Robin. If that happens, that's my job to make sure I protect my fighter during the fight. I'll stop the fight much prior to you getting hurt. My yeah. job is to look after you. And if I made that mistake and this other guy is so much better than you, I'm not going to let you show everybody how tough you are. So then what that does is it just makes it worse yeah. as 
the next fight, the next fight, because you, you, you deteriorate. You, our bodies deteriorate the same as everything else. As well as this, this guy that, that be, might beat me doesn't make him unbeatable. <laughs> it just means he yeah. beat me. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and the thing, Rob, it's great that you're saying that because you people don't realise how styles make fights. If you look at the the, fa the, the Fab Four, they talk about Roberto, Duran, Hagler, Hearn. Have a look at them. Like, Hearns knocks out Duran, like, he kills him in, 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 in a round <laughs> and and um, and Hagler, and then um, like Hagler kills Hearns, and then um, they all fight each other. It's just all different. It just styles yeah. my fights. And I, the, the, again, going back to Emmanuel Stewart, I'll never forget how Emmanuel used to say to me, Jeff, because he, he spoke about one particular fight. Said, Why would they let you fight that guy at that stage of your career when you you hadn't fought for like nearly two years and you just fought? And because because the, the people who looked after me weren't, weren't professional enough. And I say mm. that to this day without any hesitation. I'd say it in front of their face, and I and I. Have, I wouldn't even have to get an argument now because I, I know, Robbie. I, I just know what. Um, yeah, and yeah. Look, it, it, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And then, and back then, these guys didn't know enough. We yeah, here in Australia, we, we were hidden from a lot of that stuff. As, as well as like promotions themselves try to set up their their money fighters or the fighters they want to go through with 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 names and stuff. Like Rob, they, they, me, they, you, they make it. They they line them up in such a way that they try to promote the growth of certain person yeah, of off course. the back of oh, someone of else. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there are, there are fighters out there today that, like, Billy Dib, who just, they're, they're asking him to fight again. My advice is him not to, but they, were, they, they somebody just wants to have on their reach. Man. They beat this former world yeah. champion, the two top, you know, but that's up to these guys. But like I said, Robin, I mean, the easiest, I think the easiest sport in the world to bet on is boxing, because, you know, you, you know, <laughs> exactly who they're fighting. How it's so easy to get somebody an opponent that you know they're going to beat, and you know they, they, people can say it's only one punch, but most of the time the, the person that they're fighting doesn't even have that one punch. So it's yeah, it's I mean, uh, and then when you get to that, that, that you, you know, see that all the time in my sport where like these legends have done what you what, need to do. That's what's wrong with your sport, am I? That we be allowed. Anthony Mundu shouldn't be allowed ever to step back in a team of people that are experienced enough to say, "Listen, it's time." Because listen, it's it's, it's not hard to pass a medical. Mm. The, the, the medical, yeah. Yeah, yeah, medical's easily, you know. Yeah. I, I can go and train tomorrow and pass, you know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not about it's not about the medical. It's, it's about knowing. How hard yeah. was it to step away, Jeff? Yeah, it's always hard, you know, because you, you look and think, "Wow, I could beat that guy." But you could have beat him, but you, you don't realise that it's it. Boxing's a sport that when your chin's gone, it's gone. There's, there's no, you can't get a, re, a, a new chin put in, or you can't get that resistance put back. When you've been here for a long time, and Rob, I used to spar Jeff Harding every day. I used to spar Justin. I used to spar heavyweights and stuff because these other little guys couldn't spar me, you know. So um, at the end of the day, it was, it was very detrimental for me because yeah, you know, when I, when when I finally lost my resistance, big shots. Yeah, I was getting getting all, and they never never hurt me once when I was when I was yeah. young. All of a sudden, they started hurting me. Like, wow. Wow, I'm getting hurt now. You don't, you know, then you kind of think back and you think, well, listen, you know, water on a stone back and makes a stone disappear, you know. I mean, getting hit and getting hit a lot by big guys, you slowly lose your resistance. Away, yeah, yeah. wears away, yeah, no doubt. Did you spar too much, you think, in hindsight? Ah, well. What are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, 100% I sparred too many big guys. I sparred, you know, I, I, my sparring partners were light heavyweights and stuff, and I was like a featherweight, you know. And I used to have no, never had a problem, but. When I think back now, and I think why my career was finished at you know, 28 or 29 or 30 was because of that reason. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, on, you know, no doubt. Whatsoever. If you could go back, would you change it? A hundred percent. Yeah. How would you structure your sparring nowadays? Um, I would spar guys. Well, I'll give you an example. When I had Billy Dib for his last fight, I didn't let nobody hit him. I. I'll give you another example. When I trained Mike Tyson, um, during sparring, Mike used to knock guys out and we'd have to stop. So when I was Mike's trainer, the deal was this, that it was sparring. I took Bob Mirovic and I said, we're gonna to work together. We just wanna get fit to get rounds. I'm like, first of all, if, you, if we knock somebody out, we've got to stop, start. So that's not a great preparation, stop starting, you know? And if, you, if you're gonna get hurt and stuff, like I'll never forget that a day when Mike was sparring and um, he got hurt, he got hurt uh, a little during sparring and I went and spoke to the guy. I said, listen, I'll pay you to do this. Work with us, you know? and. Um, over the next few days, Mike got his confidence back, and then, then we were able to, you know, to, to get back to where we, we needed to be. But yeah, there's, there's, like I said, there's a method to the madness. Like I said, with Billy Dib, my method was to get him into the to the fight as fresh as I could, not getting beat up every day because if he got beat up every day, we got knocked down for a couple of rounds. But I got him in there fresh, and he was able to. Although he got hit a few times, I wanted to stop the fight in the tenth round when I thought he had enough, and his family wouldn't let me. And in a way, I'm happy that he went the distance 
great for himself. But again, he took punches that he didn't need to take, so I'd rather have stopped the fight. But um, yeah, I, I would change a lot of things, Rob. I, you, you, you've got to, today, to persevere and for, you, know, you, you take guys to other gyms and they immediately try to kill you. I try to explain to my boys, we don't want that. When you're, when you're sparring mm. your mates, we're here to work. This is, this is our office. All right, when we go to another gym, we can have a little bit of a kill. Beautiful, let's have a kill. We'll, we'll bring somebody from overseas. We can have, yeah. But we, you don't need that every day. That's the biggest thing with our team. Is like we have such a tight-knit group where there's just like, it's just a handful of us and we trust each other and we look after each Jobbing, other. Well, that's, well, we don't try to kill each other. Well, that, that's how it's got to be like that. You know, you, you, Rob, you could have done that. Rob, I could have done that to you. Talk to each other, help each other. I've got a young lady, Hamden, son who I'm training at the moment. Yeah. Wow, amazing potential. And um, I'm just trying to, to teach him to, to slow down. Not try to, because you can punch and you're knocking people out. So we, don't, we don't want that. You don't learn nothing from that. I know you can punch. You, you, that's, that's not going to disappear. Let, let's learn. To, to, to be in the right position, let's learn to make somebody miss and, and be in position. No, I could have punched him, I could have locked him out, but I didn't have to, could, but knowing you could do it, getting in that position. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, um, for me, I think I'm going to be a better, and I don't call myself a teacher, I'm going to be a better teacher than I was a fighter because mm. I, 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 I've learned from some, some great people overseas. And I, yeah, I, I, I try to say I'm not a coach, I'm a teacher. I teach people to do things. How I show them your, how to do things. How did your relationship with Mike Tyson get started? I don't know if you have a look at a couple of interviews that have just been on. And I don't know, he just um, he loved watching me fight. And then one day I got an award and I went to pick up my award, award in Vegas and he see me and, ah, oh, Jeff Fennick. And he gave me this card. I love watching you fight. You're my favourite fighter. And yeah, I trained in Vegas. And when I trained, I trained at the gym he trained at. And then we became very, very close. And then, yeah, I'd go over and visit him. And while he was in jail, I wrote to him and went and met him as soon as he got out of jail. and. Spend time with him, and you know, I was training him for the whole fight. But he got that tattoo on his face, right? When he comes home three days before the fight, and I said, "You can't fight with it," and he didn't want to fight. So I jumped on. A, I jumped on a plane, crying. I been there for eight weeks away from my family, training him every day. I was really upset because I felt sorry for Mike because I knew that he was going to get in trouble, and they were threatening him to sue him. And then they made him fight. They got Freddie Roach goes in, trains him for two days. He knocks the guy out. Freddie Roach gets the credit, gets paid. I'm, I'm home, but then I went back and I trained him again. And yeah, although we lost him, I was I was wrapped that I I stopped the fight because when we went back to the corner, if you just watch it on video, his friends, the guys who had been there previously, he he's all in it. I'm fighting. I'm the, exactly what I said. I'm the fucking trainer, and I'm stopping the fight. He's not. It's my friend. He's not getting hurt no more. He doesn't need to get punched. He doesn't want to be out there. And I can see in his eyes he didn't want to fight. And that's why we've always been close. He knows that I had his um his welfare at heart, and that's mm. that's that's. that's Part of the job. I mean, um, you know, it's it's, it's that's hard. That's the most important yeah, part. Yeah, of the game, right? it's it's a hard thing because you know you you think yeah. You know, but for me, I'd rather stop a, a few punches early than a few punches late. And, and you know, that you might be cranking at me at the time. Oh, I could afford on. I could afford on. I remember Diego Corrales when they stopped him against Floyd Mayweather. He wanted to kill his dad, but his dad looked after him. Because you've you've mentioned this a lot um, previously that. Um, you stop. Yeah. You, you've got that fighter's mentality. You mm. you want to look have a look when I fought. Feel what I kicked the tail out of. The instinct that's that's what we do mm. but uh, you know uh, you know it's, it's always great to sit down and think that you have somebody looked after you you'll always you'll always appreciate that as you get older and you'll always be able to say to as you talk or to your children they being um, God looked after me and that's, that's what that's what boxing that's what our sports about because we had we, we had this situation arise recently like with my last fight last fight like day before the fight I was like in bed dying yeah. Like literally dying. And you went to the fight, of course. And I was still, yeah, I was yeah, still very ready to fight. Yeah. But uh, it was, it was, it was Fab and yeah. the, the rest of the coaching staff that yeah. were making decisions in yeah. the background. That was. That's good. They made mm. the right decision. Look at it. Eh? Nothing's changed. You're still <laughs> going to be able to do what you need to do. Yeah. Just a little bit later. But the pressure's massive, though. Eh? Oh, of course. So the, the, yeah. the, and for me, the pressure was mass massive with Mike because all the all the publicity stuff. But, but my my understanding was back then, if you had a tattoo and it got. It wasn't, you know, until it heals and stuff, it's got scabby and you get a disease. That's the thing. So, so there's no way they're going to let him fight. But of course they let him fight. They don't, yeah, they yeah, they didn't clearly care. now. All they wanted was their money. You know, yeah. Showtime, they were going to sue him and so on, you know. But like I said, my, my um, association with Mike was, was, was amazing for me. It was like, I mean, you, you see them, the Beatles, and Rob, I don't know, but when Mike Tyson used to move the curtain, he's doing all these people would be outside screaming, go, we'd get in the car to go to the gym, like in London and that. And people would run up the street for, for miles. You know, just stay near the car, touching the car, and want to see him. Crazy. It was, it was it was a crazy experience. What was the what was that that 
trajectory like like with being with him like because when I when you think boxing especially in the 90s oh, like Mike Tyson yeah Tyson. yeah like I said it was crazy I mean uh, you, yeah listen Mike had people who worked for him. One, one one person was to get, to get phone numbers you know of, of the prettiest girls there it was you know, the million. it was just crazy I mean you know um, it, it was it was yeah it was I don't know it was like it I mean, it was a dream it was it's crazy like, it, it, all this attention and you don't pay for nothing, you get everything for nothing, you're picked up, you yeah, it, it, it was it was yeah, so I mean I like I said I went through an era in Australia but not not on the on the scale that he went through. It was just it was surreal, it just yeah, things that you couldn't believe. Because like when you when you think of say boxing today, you think of like Floyd Mayweather, I don't know, maybe it's me being nostalgic, but Tyson seemed to be so much larger but the, than, than what it, Mayweather it, is. It's different. Um, it's different because, yeah. Um, Maybe it's because I was a kid. Right? And, and not just that, but I, you, you, a lot of people, some like and dislike um, Floyd. I, mean, I love Floyd. I just, I've known Floyd for years and everything that he does today, he done, he's done from the start. He's always been that little kid who, and he's, people don't realise how generous he is as well and what he's done for his family and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't like the, the fact that he flaunts his money around the money whether I like it or not. Um, it's his money, it's his life, and him do what he wants with it. He, he, he's prepared to, it, like I, you remember Mike Tyson once said about Floyd, he said, oh, Muhammad Ali never had to have security to take his kids to school, you know, which isn't a great thing. The thing you got to take your kids to school, you need security guards there, which, yeah, but that's just Floyd. And if Floyd likes to live that life, um, good luck to him, um, you know. If he's um, loved Mike because they knew he came from nothing and he be, come to there, and yeah, so, you know, where Floyd, yeah, Floyd does things to make it love or hate him, man, but it doesn't matter. And I, I love Floyd for that. I love somebody that is not going to bullshit to somebody so they like you. Know, I like people who are honest. I like if it's black, it's black. If it's white, it's white. Well, one of the things I think with, uh, like say, Jeff Fennig or Rob or whatever, and we're sitting here talking, people forget you're, you're a person. So no matter whether you won belts or how much money you have, like, you know, your wife will still get angry, you still get, you're, you're still human no, being. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I got my, uh, the hardest thing, I've, I've got children, and um, you know, I've got, I got, I got two daughters, I've got a son, and um, man, I've got two daughters out there that are really attractive. One's getting married, thank God, and the other one's out. And I think, wow, man, if there were cameras in the day that on, on phones, me and my whole team would still be in jail today. I mean, uh, we, uh, yeah, we got away with. Whew. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the world's changed. I, said, I, I, I don't know if it's for the better, but wow. I think the world's the same, there's just cameras now. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's changed, it was none before. So, all well, there's cameras. But, um, yeah, I couldn't half imagine, yeah, some of the things that we got up to. What, what was it, what's it like then seeing someone like Mike Tyson as a person when things went like on the nosedive, like because you being his friend and, yeah. and whatnot, yeah, as, well, as a man. Well, the great, well, the great thing was I was there with him when, when it collapsed and tried to help him rebuild. And then, um, that's that's when you that's when you know who your real friends are. You know, when they're they're irrespective of whether you're healthy, wealthy, wise or not. You know, it's, I've, I've been there through the whole roller coaster with him. And yeah, he's Mike's Mike. Mike doesn't change. Mike's Mike's a bit of a, a light switch. It sometimes, if it's on, it's I can hot as, and if it's off, it's it's cold as. But um. Mike's just Mike. He, he's always been the same, and um, he's he's really generous. He's great to people, and um, if you're his friend, you're you're a lucky guy. He's he's, he's very very loyal. Is he? How's he doing now? Like, oh, he's, he's he's got that marijuana farm. He's gonna he'll have he'll end up having more money in the world soon because of that. How many people over there go and party with him? And your mate Conor McGregor. So I smoked that weed yeah. with him, you know. He's not my yeah, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, those your sports. So yeah, they, they, they do all this shit. I don't, I don't know. I'm listen, Mike, and I. This, yeah, I'll say this. I used to sit in Mike's garage with him, and he used to smoke that much weed that I used to. Yeah, I used to feel like just from the smell because I've ne never, 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 never taken a million people here. They've all, they all have a joint with them. I've never had one. I never will. But I used to think that all those pigeons. They used to be in the garage, <laughs> and then Mike used to tell you these stories how some of his rolls with the ground. They were stoned. No, no, no doubt that when he let them pigeons out, they were stoned. That's why they, his rollers were hitting the ground. They the, were stoned. Well, no, the, the pigeons were hitting the ground. Yeah, some of the, he, would, he would tell the stories. Man, one of them was rolling and it hit the it like it hit the, the ground. When the, they usually stop. They know where the they just pass the, out. Yeah. Well, no, they just they were stoned. They didn't know when to stop. They were like, and, 
uh, they were high on, on the weed that he smoked in his and, and yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll never forget a couple of my mates I've taken over that are trying it with him that I've had to carry home and actually have to medically look after them all night because they're that, whatever that weed he gave was so strong that, you know, they, yeah, they were sweating and shivers, eating, yeah, it was crazy, you know. But yeah, I've, n- I've never done it. I've never, I've never had a fascination or you, I, could, I couldn't believe, Rob, you know what, I, you know, I, of course, I'm sure you've seen people pass a, a weed around or put a, I couldn't imagine myself putting my mouth over a bo- somebody else after I had a mouth around a, a bong or some shit, I, I couldn't, yeah, I'm just not like, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those clean guys that had four or five showers a day and I see people smoking, putting something out of their mouth and somebody else's mouth and some bottle in there, I couldn't, yeah, couldn't dream of it. Yeah. Do, do you think that the culture of combat sports has changed since your time? Yeah, definitely so, yeah. So, oh. To now, like just oh. the, the athletes or the atmosphere oh. around it or what oh. they're pushed wow. to doing wow. or how yeah. they're acting? Yeah. And like I said, Rob, it, it's changed so much, like I said, yeah. I mean, everybody thinks that it's great to hire this third person that gives you this this extra work out of day. That's the worst thing they've ever done. Listen, like I said, go through just go through the greatest fighters in history. They ran in the morning, and they done their stomach, and they trained in the afternoon. I mean, that third that that midday session or that extra session, everybody thinks is making you super strong fit. That just detracts what you're doing when you want to be perfect in, 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 in octagon or in the ring, that's your office. When you walk into that office in the afternoon, that's where you've got to excel. You don't have to excel. I mean, running's important, it's really important because these legs carry you. But it's getting them right, it's not, it's not getting them overdone. It's not it's me sending you to, to the octagon sore in the afternoon because you don't waste, oh, he's, he's stronger. No, he's not strong, he's got to be able to perform in the octagon. I don't care what, how much he can lift or, you know, yeah, these people have got it all wrong. And when um, me, I'm easy, but we run in the morning and we do our, our session in the afternoon. Nobody's fitter than my boys. But what we do in that hour is work in. It's in my 15 rounds that I do, Rob. I, I, won't, I won't let the guys do two hours in the afternoon. Yeah, because I do two hours in the afternoon. You can't tell me that your body can be pushed for two hours solid. It's impossible. If, if anybody says they can do it, send them to me. I'll give them a two hour session. If they can do a two hour session, I'll give them whatever they want. They can't do it, Rob. You know, it's, 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 it's about putting things in the place at the right time and at the right space and yeah and and what people don't realize is if if you over if you overburn the engine the engine can't get better it's re- it's better to be a little bit underdone than overdone if you're overdone you, you're done mate you can't you can't turn back the clock and think wow i've done too much i'll you know then you've got to have a, a big break which is not yeah so it's, it's about building and, and, and climaxing at the right time you know and so that's, um, and I've, I mean, all these guys are all trained together, but everybody's body's different. Everybody can, some guy can run better than the other, some guy's got to, yeah, can, can do more sit-ups, or some guy can do other things. So, so it's, it's just about working with the individual. And again, that's where Manuel Stewart was so great. Emmanuel Stewart, Rob, you tra- he trained you, mate. You, you went and trained with him, nobody else was there. The gym was yours. You know, when I trained with Johnny Lewis, and, and no disrespect to Johnny, we had a gym full, 20 people. You know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the pads. You know, they're watching me spar on that shit, and then he's trying on somebody else. Emmanuel, perfectionist. Just everything you done, he watched you, had everything set up, did your hands. It was, yeah, it was just a whole different kettle of fish, you know, uh, the ultimate professional. And then again, he's, he was from a great gym in the Cronk, and they, they had all those great fighters, so, you know, and he got great money from them, so he had to treat each person individually, you know. You have some young, really good young guys coming up. Yeah, I've got, I've got some good boys. I've got a, a young kid here at the moment. Like I said, Nader Hamden's son. Um, wow, for the school. But like I said, um, it's it's about being able to get him to, to do what he needs to do. It's being able to slow him down and just let him know. It's not just about being able to knock people out or getting punched. He, he's one of those tough kids that doesn't care about getting punched. I, I care about him getting punched. Is he similar to his dad? Can you see his dad in him? The well, there's lots of similarities in his dad, but I, I see... I see um, a skill level ten times better than his dad. These kids today, these young kids, they, they're athletes. They, they they play soccer and stuff. And they they're different. Where Nader was a kid like me, just straight from the street, from gangs into into the ring. You know, and I'll never forget the first time I heard about this Nader hand. I had a boy who sparred him and nearly killed poor Nader because Nader didn't know how to box. It was the same as the first time I stepped in the ring when this guy built the shield. I mean, I thought I could fight. You know, but fighting in the in the street and fighting in the ring is completely different. Like, again, it's mm. it's. You, you got to think, and you know, if you don't know what you're doing, how do you think? You know, how do you how to prepare for it? You know. Who who do you see as the next big things coming out of Australia for boxing? I think we got like, we got so much talent. We got a lot of we got a lot of kids. The, the little Maloney brothers are overseas doing their best. We got like, 
Cam Bosis, we've got some good kids. A little kid that I've got, young Brock Jarvis, who just won the youth world title. He's had 16 fights, 16 wins, 15 knockouts, I think eight or nine in the first round. And he's four guys who can fight, you know? Uh, yeah, so, but um, yeah, I've got, uh, there's all these people who try, a kid named Liam Paro up in Brisbane, he's really good with it. All these people are against each other. Nobody works together, Rob, you know? Oh, if you go to here, Jim, you know, you know, they don't want to talk to you, oh, you spy out of here, Jim. Unless, unless we all get together and help each other, Australian boxing will always just do that, you know? And, and that's, that's what it'll always do. You know, it's never gonna, it's never gonna be at that peak again because this gym don't like me and that gym don't like you or they don't work with him, he doesn't work with him, so how do you get better? Unless you get all the, all the right sparring and everything else, you, you, you never get better. Your, your, your personal trajectory went from, so, so you just walked into the gym that day, saw it, came back, Boxed, um, boxed that guy. The yeah. was he from there? You went. You I went to the Olympics. I, I went to like it. Is, point. It, is it true? Sorry, sorry yeah. to cut you off. I just want yeah. to remember. Is it true that you? Because I remember this vaguely, but I was a kid. You, you got that decision overturned in the Olympics, right? And then later on, as a pro, was it for the world title? You boxed the guy that got the silver medal. He gave you the medal to yeah, it. Yeah, no, he was the gold medal. The gold medal. So I, I, I was a gold yeah, medal. Yeah, the, the, the gold medalist was a box named Steve McCrory. Right. And he won the gold medal, and then as a professional, we fought, and we fought 15 rounds, and I knocked him out in the 14th round. But prior to the fight, Rob, I'd, I had to go to a health farm because I broke my hand and I didn't pull out. I got injections and stuff, and um, I went, and because I was, I was having problems making weight, and they put me on a health farm, so it was, it was, it was like torture, you know, they eat shit every day, but and I still couldn't make weight. But um, prior to the fight, Rob, um, the, uh, two days before I went back home, and um, we, we we don't weigh in we weigh in the day of the fight back then. It's not like today. We weighed in lunchtime of the fight. And I'll never forget I woke up the morning of the fight and I was still like five pounds over. And I said to my promoter And you were how heavy were you? Because five pounds four. Yeah, yeah. I was 118 pounds. I was like 123 pounds. I, ra- I, I used to do a five K run every morning. I ran five K, ran five K, ran five I was about one pound over. My mum came out, so I was like that and my mum was crying, no, no. My promoter said, Look, Jeff, just go in, weigh in, you're gonna weigh in a pound or so over, that's no problem. We'll lose the title on the scale, you st- you st- still, hopefully you'll still win, and um, you you be one. So, so uh, ran one more time, Rob. I ran again, I got right near the weight. So I got there on that day, I was like, wow, so dehydrated and sick. I made weight, fought in the, four, in the, in the sixth round, he hits me with a left hook and he knocks me out. My legs are wobbling, and, you know, survived, you know, fought on in the 14th round and knocked him out. So, but he never gave me his Amateurs and and pros, and you, you, that was your apprenticeship. You in the amateurs, well, yeah, it was your apprenticeship and stuff. You know, yeah. my first pro fight was ten rounds. How many k's did you do the day of? Did you have in between? Rob, an ice cream company said I stole my ice cream. Man, I had the runs like I had to take the gloves off and go. Fifteen k's, dehydrated yeah, yourself. The the I eat ice cream in a Mars bar than any, but my mum used to make me red. I got the run something bad. A couple of times, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But yeah, but um, <laughs> that, these guys today weigh in, not 24 hours before, they weigh in 30 hours. Full on training, brother, and I haven't stopped. <laughs> and my p- yeah, before, before, I, before I knew better, I used to just eat whatever I could and so I used to take this stuff from New Lax and stuff. The day before, I'd fight, like, yeah, because I'd, I'd take it the night before, it was a natural thing, but it made me go to the toilet to empty out everything. Yeah. And the laxative, the laxative would be kicking on. Oh yeah, yeah. And while you're fighting, don't worry. That's like said, separate. Oh, he knows. Yeah. That's yeah. That, 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 yeah. that's the worst. Of, yeah. So so what's what's uh, what projects are you, are you doing now? Like what do you what, what, what's your day consist of now? Yeah, like I, I get up really early. I Mark Boris comes and trains me early in the morning. Loves his boxing stuff. And then I got a couple other guys that, um, and then I'll train um, young Brock and. You know, Hassi Hussain and the boys, and uh, yeah, Jacob Rocker, one of the, the boys from City Center Theatre, we all uh, we all get together and we, we, we train. So yeah, but uh, so then I'll yeah, then I'll train some people privately during the yeah. Jeff when they come and train it. I like you know, I usually eat at six o'clock every night. So I got this guy who comes at five, so I try to kill him really badly for forty five minutes, gives me fifteen minutes, have a shower, I'll make him do some bike at the end, and I'll leave you at six o'clock. I'm one of those guys who I haven't changed anything for like years. I'm up at four thirty every day, and I'm in bed still now at 8.30, 9 o'clock every day, yeah. yeah. And and so you're now the creature of boxes now that you have, uh, Brock just won the 
the youth Can world you title. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, well, Brock just, he won the world title, but it's, a, it's under 26 years of age and uh, yeah, fought, a pretty, fought a guy that yeah, a lot of people thought we'd lose against, but um, and he was, Brock on the day was sick, but Brock's an amazing body puncher. Me and he hit him with a body shot, and that was, yeah. You know, I said to Brock, if we can yeah, get out of there early, let's get out of there, because um, the day of the fight had really bad asthma, and he wasn't well, so um, I'm happy that it finished early. But uh, yeah, so I trained him, I've got, like I said, I've got young uh, Hass, has uh, made his son, who's um, going to turn pro very soon. Uh, I've got a couple other kids. How old is he? Um, made his son, he's 21, just turned 21. He said his 21st birthday a couple of days ago. Brock just turned 21 last November. So yeah, we've got a, we've got yeah, good kids. They, they work hard and they, they listen to me and they know that um, like I said, I'm, I tell every I'm got a thing that I love saying to everybody. Rob, everybody trains for three or four hours a day or two or three hours a day. It's what you do in those other twenty hours that make you the champion. It's what time you go to bed and what what you eat and how you conduct yourself. And for me, preparation's everything. And my I never prepared on the day. My preparation had a had a pen and paper on my bed every single day. I'd write what I was, my next day consists of every day. Before I went to bed, I knew exactly what I had to do the next day. If anything was going to change. If it wasn't, it was the same pad there every day, but I had it every day. Preparation's everything. If you, if you prepare properly, you, 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 there's no excuses, you know. So, and if you prepare properly, you don't need to make excuses because you've done the best you can do. And I tell everybody that if you prepare properly, you've done the best you can do. You always win, irrespective. You might have a W there. We still won because we've done everything. Then we just got to go and see what you know, what more we can do, or what we, you know, or what the other guy done better than us. You know, so yeah. And I, like I said, there's it's like Robert said earlier. Just because I can beat Rob doesn't mean that this guy is not going to beat me. And there's always had to fit us, you know. So it's great to stay level headed and stay stay grounded and. Um, yeah, just uh, like I said, um, prepare for what you have to do. Like I said, um, like Rob, when I fought for my first world title, all the Australian boxers, oh, he can't win. He's never done, never done 15 rounds because I fight 15 rounds. You know, in my, in my seventh fight, I trained 15 rounds a hundred times prior to. I'm prepared for. It. I'm, I'm a stew, but they think that you know, yeah, mm. yeah, you know, made me want to prove them wrong. You know, I, I love them. You know, shaking hands with somebody that thought yeah. I couldn't do something. You know. Just smiling at it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you know, you know when you know, so that jealousy thing you know, when you're shaking somebody's hand and they don't really want to shake it and they don't really want to give that credit, but they've got no they've got no choice and that's why I'm proud of you, mate. I know Rob, you know, like I said, yeah, um I'd love to do a couple of sessions with you because I know that Justin will love it anyway and you'll love it, you know, and um, I'd love him to be there. You know, so you know, <coughs> I'm one of those guys, you know, just I just know that I used to think to myself, I used to watch, and what I used to do, Rob, my biggest thing I did, I used to, I used to watch my fight a hundred times over. I used to fall asleep watching my same fight every day, my last fight. I wanted to see what I, what I done, what I could have done better. You know, that's where you, you you learn from yourself. You can learn from other people. It's great to have idols and people think we're great and watch things, but you're not going to learn anything more than from yourself and see what you could have done and why didn't I do that? Oh, he done that and done that to me. So you know, Same. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Pleasure, for your guys. Time. Thanks no, no, a lot. Problem. Honestly, thank you so much for having us ah, in the home. Mate, I told you. I, 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 I said, but I just think, yeah, it's an honour to have you in my house. Thank you. Yeah.